for a scouting update. Hey everyone, Nicole Steckline, technical agronomist for DeKalb and Asgro in Northeast Iowa. Obviously the name of the game right now is lack of moisture. I wanna show you right now one of the things that I'm noticing as it pertains to lack of moisture. All pretty familiar with probably getting sidewall compaction um, and then having those mohawk roots. Now, typically that's going to happen when you have really wet planting conditions, um, but it's just made further worse when we get hot and dry after that because it turns those sidewalls into bricks. Now, even if you planted when it was a little bit tacky or even if you planted, you know, when it was pretty close to fit, you can still get some of that sidewall compaction, especially if we turn hot and dry. So here's what I'm seeing in the fields is some very restricted root growth. But well, here's something that's pretty typical. You can see here that we had that sidewall. Um, I don't believe that this field was planted way too wet, but we've basically got a brick right here um, in between. Since we are hot and dry, we are starting to get that furrow starting to open up a little bit. But I pulled the soil away from this one here and like this root right here, you can see he is trying to grow anywhere he can, but he's getting light he's getting heat he's getting um air directly on that root tip as it's starting to grow and we have restricted root growth right on either side of it got this plant pulled out right now and you can see that as soon as it gets past um init that initial sidewall it is starting to come out and grow out the way it should but we had at one point started to get rootless corn syndrome on this plant now a you can see that we don't have a very wide base and at some point it did get a little bit floppy and you can tell by that little bit of curvature down here at the base, it was trying to, it was probably starting to tip a little bit and uh, it was kind of trying to right itself. Now, especially I want to focus on kind of this root right here. He came out and started to grow. He actually stopped growing and almost kind of grew in a little ball right there. Now, in many cases, he might shoot out a couple of roots here as we get moisture but we have extremely restricted root growth right here. Um, and that is a combination of a little bit of sidewall compaction, but the main culprit here is just really dry conditions because this is gonna end up being a pretty big sail with a pretty small boat underneath it. Now, obviously restricted roots, that's going to mean restricted water as well as restricted fertility because a corn plant, any plant really in general, it's like a guy who got in a fight in a bar and now has his jaw wired shut. He can only get nutrition, they can only get nutrition in liquid form. There might be a delicious steak on that table, there might be all this potash in the soil, but unless it can be brought in through liquid, unless we get a rain, it's not going to get that. So I am starting to see some potassium deficiency out in the field, not for lack of nutrition, but for lack of getting it into that wire jaw. Also got rootworm hatch is upon us and pretty soon we're probably gonna start seeing some of the feeding on those roots. Now, couple things to think about. Again, we already talked about restricted root growth. So we are starting with, you know, probably not quite enough food at our party for all the mouths that are going to be chewing on it. Next thing to think about is populations. We tend to think about mother nature, you know, controlling these populations with, gosh, we had a hard, you know, we had a hard winter. Mother nature killed some of them off. That's not how that works because think about it. Those rootworm are four to six inches. Those eggs are four to six inches in the soil. And we really actually need temperatures of closer to negative 13 degrees to be cold enough to kill them. Soil 14, you know, soil uh, four to six inches below the surface doesn't typically get that cold. Where mother nature really keeps populations in checks is by drowning them. So when you have a dry June, we aren't drowning any of them. So we're gonna have a very high survival rate in those fields where we aren't getting the water because mother nature's not taking care of them. The other piece of that puzzle is insecticide. So if we don't have a whole lot of water to get that insecticide in soil solution and kind of move out and give us a bigger zone of protection, we are going to have a higher level of feeding even if we did use insecticide. Now, if you've got a trait such as SmartStacks Pro out there where you've got three modes of action below ground, we're gonna be pretty well protected. Now they're still gonna have to take a bite to die, but we at least aren't relying on water to make sure that that insecticide's working at a high level. 
Now more good news when it comes to roots. A lot of calls that I've been going on have um, been related to anhydrous ammonia burn. Now you're gonna get more ammonia burn in a dry year because what's happening when you get ammonia burn is you put that anhydrous on and it's going to jack the pH up in that zone. And unless you get water or time to buffer that pH, allow it to neutralize when you have seed planted really close to it, um, you're gonna get that burn from the super high pH. One of the other things that can happen is that if it was tacky when you put ammonia on and you sealed off, it likes to expand in all directions. But if you sealed off the sidewall because it was tacky, then it's moving up and it's getting closer to your seed bed. Now, a lot of these fields are going to start getting closer to, um, to that V8 stand. The field that I'm in right now is actually V7. There are a lot of herbicide applications that cut you off at V7, V8, because we're starting to get to, get to that point where we're getting a lot of kernel development. A lot of stuff is happening in that plant as it relates to yield at V8. So make sure that you're going out there, you're staging your corn, you're looking at your label so that you're not potentially hurting your yield by the herbicide that you're putting on. Now again, in a lot of these fields, especially if their only form of nit nitrogen was ammonia, as you're driving with the rows, you're gonna see a lot of this green, yellow, green, yellow. Patterns are interesting because if you're looking down at bathroom tile, right, you can see square, 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 square. But if you change your angle of the way that you're looking at it, all of a sudden you're seeing diamond, 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 diamond. That's gonna to happen too, especially at this V6 stage with the corn. If you're looking at it and you're driving with the rows, you're gonna see that pattern one way, but if you get in the right angle, you're gonna see the angle of application from your nitrogen. Now, we're seeing that right now because that plant is needing a lot more nitrogen. So if it's in a spot where it's closer to the nitrogen, it's gonna be green. The ones that are further away, you're gonna see yellow. It might take longer to grow out of that pattern this year because of lack of moisture. The roots aren't getting there as quickly as we need it to. <clears throat> and the nitrogen isn't allowed to move through the soil because of lack of water as well. Make sure that if you were planting into a cover crop or you had maybe some higher weed pressures early in the season, be watching for armyworm. They are out there. Um, be checking for armyworm in your hay stands as well, your alfalfa stands, because they'll chew on that stuff too, as we saw in the fall two years ago. On the soybean side, um, early planted beans really are starting to look really good. Um, they're getting to that V2, V3 stage, which means that they've got um, a fair amount of their nodules are formed and they are starting to, to, to produce nitrogen. So those are really starting to take off. A lot of the later planted, particularly some of our no-till soybeans, are having a much tougher go with it. When they were later planted, it means that they were lacking moisture from the get-go. Add on top of that a group 15 herbicide, thinking about your warrants, your Ziduas, um, Outlook, Dual, those herbicides, Without a whole lot of water, those beans are sucking up a whole lot of that. It's not been diluted. So we are seeing those being a little bit shrunk down in their size. They aren't getting going quite as well as the ones that did have some water and better emergence conditions. Overall, from what I see driving around Northeast Iowa, I would rate the crop condition pretty good. It looks pretty nice, but these plants aren't needing a whole lot of water yet. Um, as we get bigger plants, we're gonna get closer to canopy the water demand is going to get much higher here soon. So getting a drink here in the next week is going to be really, really important. As always, if you guys have questions, call, text, or email. That's it for today.